Michigan's Upper Peninsula, a place known for beautiful shorelines, epic winters, and vast forests. The trees dominate the landscape and even draw people from around the world for their spectacular fall showing. But most visitors don't realize these are working for us. The forestry industry accounts for most of the private sector jobs and supply the myriad of forest products we depend on. And these jobs have never been easy. If you want to just show up for work, this is not the business to be in. And anything to do with the forest industry, whether it's logging, trucking, or anything, it's, it's work. It's something you got to want to do. While challenges of the job vary, at least one thing stays consistent. Wood is heavy. And heavy means hard to move. The Upper Peninsula is remote, rugged, and famous for uncooperative weather. Being way up in the UP, logistics are great for the raw materials, but the logistics aren't so good for shipping the lumber out. We're more or less dictated by the weather. There's times where it rains, where it's mud, where you can't get through it, or there's times where the roads are really slippery, maybe you get a snowstorm. It's chaotic almost is what it is, but you deal with it. It's just, it's just something you get used to. Let's dive a bit deeper into the beginnings of the wood supply chain and the ongoing efforts to improve efficiencies. The logging operations are located across the UP, and there is a strong reliance on truckers to take the logs to the nearest mill or potentially more distant buyers. Well, the biggest challenge is finding qualified, energetic log truck drivers. There's not as much money in the log trucking business now as maybe there was some years ago, so it's hard to find people. Our closest mill that we haul to is about 130 miles away. And so getting a backhaul is, is pretty much impossible. So it's, it's always a one-way trip and deadheading home all the way. It'd be nice to grab something to bring something back, but it never works that way. There are a lot of companies and challenges to get the logs to the mill. And there are a lot of things that can go wrong along the way. In this part of the supply chain, the profit margins can be relatively thin. Just a lot of fuel expense being spent and time and wear and tear on our equipment just to make that one trip. And every year it seems, I know my expenses go up, my insurance goes up every year, just your, your fixed costs go up regardless of what you do. And you try to be as efficient as you can, but um, it's, it's just hard. But trucks are not the only way to get logs to market. Trains are far more efficient. While rail is the ideal and most efficient way to transport logs, under the current situation, trains have been notoriously difficult to fully incorporate into the supply chain. And we have to haul wood 150 to 180 miles to a mill when we're right by the rail line and the rail line goes into the mill. It's foolishness. It's, you know, it's a waste of a resource. Our company is not involved with transporting logs on the rail because there is no availability for us. They've, they've almost like they've abandoned the railroads and, and gone the trucks, which I think is kind of sad because the most efficient way to move wood, especially a long distance, would, would be rail. And I've loaded rail cars in the past and it's worked out great. A lot of our loads that go across the country, instead of having to go by a semi-truck, going by rail would be a lot more efficient in my opinion. The main problem seems to be a disconnect between the business models of railways and loggers. Loggers and timber companies tend to have relatively small operations and each work independently to move their wood. The railway business model has moved to working predominantly with large and consistent loads. It's a mismatch. It's just not feasible to work with some of the railroads. Our business with them over the years has been so poor. The last 10 or 15 years we haven't even considered hauling wood on rail because they just weren't willing to work with a small amount of cars and having cars to you in a timely fashion. As a result, there are loads of logs that sit unused in sidings until quotas can be reached to get them onto trains. As the rail systems continue to advance and ship other products with consistent volume outputs, the logging industry in the UP has become less and less attractive for the railway. Without the use of rail, the loggers have to rely on the truckers to drive greater distances to get their products to the mills. And the greater the distance, the thinner the profit margin for all. If we get on a job that's 100 to 150 miles away from the mill, it takes too much time to haul a load of wood. 
on a truck to the mill. Years ago, we could load railroad cars in a timely fashion, order a bunch of cars, the cars would come in, you'd load them, and they'd get delivered to the mill, and it re drastically reduced your cost of transporting wood to market. Sometimes you might spend all day just to get your product to the mill, then you might have a two-hour ride home. By the time you get home, you're pretty much wiped out, at least when you sit in one of these things. This isn't like driving a car or a new Cadillac, especially this thing. This thing rides like a brick, you know? <laughs> However, we do see examples in other regions and countries where they have found a way past this problem. There are several other regions in the United States that have a, a heavy forest products industry, and especially some of the southeastern states, they are more plantation-style feedstock producers. Also, uh, some of the overseas countries like uh, Scandinavia. One of the things they've really done has been to try to concentrate the locations where they get their raw materials, but then also make them very consistent from week to month to year. All the time, the same lines and the same volumes moving from one place to another. Is there any way to improve these systems to make the logging industry in Michigan more competitive with the suppliers around the globe? Researchers at Michigan Technological University think there is. We are doing our analyses based on actual detailed data. And that hasn't really been done in the past. We have had a really strong collaborative effort from the three different state agencies, Michigan Economic Development Corporation, Michigan Department of Transportation, and Michigan Department of Agriculture and Rural Development. They have all been co-funding the project. In addition, we've been able to leverage funding from the so-called National University Rail Center. So the funding has come from multiple sources collaboratively. Now from the industry side, we've really seen unprecedented participation, both from the forest industry companies and also from the transportation service providers, the truckers and the, and the railroad companies, by them opening up their data for our analysis. Basi Lautala has been working with the logging industry to understand how the supply chain works and where it could be improved. So I think the forest products industry companies have done a really good job optimizing the supply chain, especially for the raw materials. And how they normally do that is uh, by securing the feedstock from as close to the mill as possible, because a great portion of that supply chain cost is related to the transportation. So one of the things that we have been concentrating in our work with forest industry to improve the cost efficiency of their supply chain. And this really requires somewhat collaborative approach between the individual industry companies. It won't be easy, but with some coordination, the supply chain might be restructured to achieve greater economies of scale. Some of the ways to try to increase better economies of scale are simplifying the transportation lanes. If you can concentrate more of the volumes to fewer lanes, it makes it easier to use truck, rail, multimodal transportation, where both modes handle the uh, movements that they are better suited for. Now, it may sound a little bit conflicting, but we actually believe that there would be benefits for truckers because they would be able to run shorter round trips and get higher loaded miles per day, and that's how they are getting paid. We also look into the potential for collaborating between the forest industry companies, as if you combine these volumes by multiple companies, it may be easier to create those larger uh, economics of scale moments for these lanes. Such a restructure would also require some significant investments in the supply chain infrastructure. New log cars would be needed as the fleet is aging and shrinking. To increase access and streamline truck routes, existing bridges will need to be repaired or new ones will need to be built. Sidings will need to be upgraded to safely collect logs along the rails. The collaborative approach is going to be really critical for our region and we need to recognize that we don't really compete internally here but we compete against other regions and other countries that may have easier climatic and geographical conditions than we do. We need to find every efficiency and every opportunity to reduce our supply chain costs to keep our industry competitive here.
The forest product sector remains the lifeblood of many of the communities in the Upper Peninsula. And with the emerging bioeconomy, it can remain that lifeblood in the foreseeable future. So it's crucial that this industry thrives. The way forward won't be easy, but it is time to move forward. The study conducted by the researchers at Michigan Tech represents an unprecedented level of cooperation from the individuals and companies that make up the logging supply chain. To more effectively get these great wood products to houses around the globe, it is essential to tap into that same spirit of collaboration. I say it's, it's, it's a team effort like a football team. This isn't an individual sport. You all have to work together. I think if the forestry community and the trucking companies and the railroads could work together, we could probably reduce some of the inventory problems that the mill has and ease the cost of transporting logs to market. I do feel that a more efficient rail and trucking system would improve our profit margins. We just want to get the wood to the market the quickest, cheapest way we possibly can and safest. It will take trust, cooperation, and compromise for our region to compete with the world.